Hey, hey guys, Diner69046 here, and I'm back with another episode of the Let's Play series. Ooh, creepy, cra creepy cave sounds. <laughs> I'm just here grinding some experience, and I've been enchanting quite a bit. I'll, uh, I recorded some clips of it, which I will show you now in hopefully some non-boring montage way. Ooh, that's a close-up. There, there we go. Okay, and besides those enchants, oh, did one get out? There he is. <laughs> besides those enchants, I also got some books, which I want to combine these books now with the stuff we've got, at least some of them. So I got this really good sword, as you all saw, and I want to combine those to get that, which is amazing. I want to put Depth Strider on these Protection 4 boots. I want to put protection 3 on this. Oh, I can't. I'm out of XP, huh? But we're going to put protection 3 on the helmet. And then we're going to put aqua infinity on the helmet. And unbreaking 3 on the helmet. So we'll put... Not those. <laughs> we'll put these 3 on the helmet here. Which will give us protection 4 and breaking 3. Respiration 3 and aqua infinity. And then our armor will be done except for the boots. We still need unbreaking 3 and... Feather Falling 4 on the boots, and Mending on all of them, of course. And then on the bow, we're going to do a Power 4 book to make it Power 5. So, yeah, I wanted to do all that on camera, but, you know, some things just don't work out. And then the other thing that I did is I added a tune to our thing here. I'll climb up here and show you. The note blocks here. We'll see if it decides to go off. I guess I don't need that, do I? No. Okay. We'll see if it get enough zombies for it to go off. But yeah, <laughs> it's just a couple codes or uh, tunes, notes. That's the word, notes here. And as you can see by the hay bells, if you know anything about Minecraft, you'll know what instrument it'll be. And there it is. <laughs> So I added the Dixie horn to play every time that my mob farm goes off. And I guess the experience and stuff overweighs the pressure plate and causes it to trigger again, which is odd, but I don't know. So <laughs> it plays like multiple times after that, and the light just stays on now. Uh, I'll go ahead and play it for you again just in case you're interested. Right, so, yeah, it's like the first couple um, uh, notes to Dixieland, and it's uh, it's pretty much the General Lee horn. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool off of Dukes of Hazard if you ever seen the show. Um, I might add some more notes later on, but for now, that's all I'm going to do. It's better than that dinging tune that we were stuck with. But um, uh, I'm going to grind out some XP, and I'll get back to... Hopefully combining all of this. Oh, yeah, I've got Feather Falling 2 and Sharpness 2 because I'm going to do this to Sharpness 5 and eventually Feather Falling 4. And then the Fortune 3 pick now is Efficiency 5. And I need to disenchant this pick. Uh, where's, I don't want to bully you. <laughs> what? Where's Power 4? All right. I'll do that. And then I'm going to disenchant this pick because I enchanted it and didn't get what I wanted. And, uh, right, I also went caving. I'm sorry, I'm a little jumbled right now. Put these chests here to get a little more organized. I went caving a lot. Yeah, one of these had iron in it, right? Nope. Okay. But as you can see right here, I got quite a bit of materials. <laughs> um, over a stack of diamonds now. Plenty of iron for a beacon in whatever project we need that requires hoppers. And... Oh man, could you need more redstone? <laughs> so yeah, that's where we're at right now. But uh, I'm going to back to this right here. And I'll let you know when I'm done. Oh, we need seven. Okay, so a little bit of a change of plans here. Um, all this XP grinding has persuaded me to do a different project for today. <laughs> So basically, oh man, this entire mine shaft is just not anywhere near explored. We'll explore a little bit while I talk. Basically, the zombie grinder just is not that fast at all. 
So we are going to make a cave spider spawner grinder, XP grinder today. Um, when I was a kid and I played this game, I always thought that those were just way too complicated to build since the cave spiders are only like a half block tall or so. Ooh, that's a hazard. <laughs> Hello, creepy cave noise. But uh, I think actually, really, they're not that bad to make. And they're a whole lot faster than that zombie one. So that's what we're going to do today. I mentioned that I wanted to do this and that this hasn't been explored. Well, I actually explored a lot of it before that. And I'll show you. This is... I got like another four stacks of iron. It's I've been caving so much in this series. It is, it is insane. It's completely unnecessary too. We have beyond the amount of resources that we need at this point. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we have the amount of tools we need <clears throat> for this build, so I might have to go back to the other base. We're actually a decent ways away from the other base, which I might put a portal here and see if it's quicker that way, but we'll see. But I'm going to show you all how to build this. So um, basically these spawners, uh, I said on the... <clears throat> on the zombie spawner that these could spawn like nine or four blocks down four blocks up no it's actually a three tall spawning space so i was uh, completely wrong on that but it does go four blocks out in every direction which we will do here and we'll have to get rid of that floor but that's okay basically this will be the spawning room and all this is going to do is they're going to fall in the water they're going to you know, swim in that water down to down to a crushing chamber, and then we'll crush them, and there'll be one hit for XP, which is exactly what we want. But the uh, I know that sounds simple on paper, but there are a couple of setbacks that we have to work around. One of those being the spiders like to climb, so if they get to a wall, they're going to climb. If in the water stream, they might try to climb. And there are ways we can work around that, and we will, using pistons and just, you know, working around their <clears throat> AI and try and reset their tracking, which will make them undo their climbing, hopefully. So, yeah, that's, that's how we're going to do that. It's pretty simple. I'll show you all the crusher. It'll basically just use a Ethos Hopper Timer, which I use so much in this series so far already. It's amazing. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it for the design. I'm uh, I'm gonna start digging out this room a little bit more and get some water down and show you all what I'm trying to do here. The room is now dug out, so we will just fill up a back wall here with water, and then there's gonna be one row left right here, which is perfectly fine, because we're gonna dig down one, <clears throat> and we're gonna put a water there and a water there. And then that will come here, and if we dig this out, that's where that water will go. And that's perfect, because we'll just crush them right there, which is A-OK. -okay. Now, they will be within reach of the spawner, of course, but that's fine. Um, there is a mob limit, uh, essentially, nowadays, so that's not going to be too much of a problem. One way we tackle their... Uh, climbing ordeals is we make sure they are traveling fast enough in this water and one way we can do that is by deleting that right there and putting iron bars right here and I can show you the difference here so if I'm going here you can see we're slowly slowly <laughs> slowly than I anticipated come on well as you can see it's very slow right you know, give it a little push Right, very slow. Okay, here, slowly, slowly, slowly. <laughs> but once we get to this edge, it will drop us compared to the right there where it wouldn't have dropped us, right? So that's why the iron bars are better because, you know, they're, they're a half block thinner, which means that the water will flow down like that. And that's pretty much the water stream. Another thing what we'll end up doing is having some pistons here that will every now and then move this wall up and down, which is uh, another way to reset their tracking. But 
that's pretty much it for the spawner room here. It's just a, a three high kind of, uh, what is it, nine by nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, nine by nine. Nine by three by nine room is the spawner room. And then you do this right here and they'll go down. Okay, so I think we're ready to do the redstone behind this. And there's going to be a couple components here. The first one we're going to focus on is going to be the crusher. So when we crush them, they will be right here. So there'll be a sticky piston to this block right here. And when activated, it'll, you know, it'll crush them. Uh, we'll run the redstone wiring up here, I guess, where all of our <laughs> chests and stuff are. We need to move them anyways, so we'll just dig out a little spot here. We need this to be kind of compact, you know, don't want to really waste redstone here. Okay, so, um, yeah, we might as well move all this. Oh, that's a pain having to move it, though. <laughs> you can never really find guess where you're... Where your mob room's gonna be whenever you build these, though, so. Well, I guess you could, but I never put enough thought into it. Okay, so for this, we want a regular piston and a sticky piston. So just a sticky piston right here. Actually, we'll push this back one. And then a regular piston, or a sticky piston right there. Block of redstone. It's just your typical hopper clock, basically. And then that right there. You'll have comparators facing out of that. And should be a block right there and a block right here so that we can transfer redstone into that block powering it. And um, let's see, I think it's like 12 is the right amount. I'm not sure. And this should only activate whenever we hit a button, so. I believe it's this button, let's see if we, oh, that was not supposed to update, <laughs> but if we were to just hook a button up right here, oh, give me that back, All right, so when it does that, there will be power being sent to this crusher for however long, I guess there's a cooldown, yeah, you have to wait for that to go back which makes sense you know it's not like the crushing should last any longer than that anyways so one more time I'll just show you that's gonna be crushing them like that and then off and then let's see if I can count the ticks here off the top of my head one two three four five six I think it's more than that isn't it Let's do like 18. Oh, oh! I did not mean to throw that. Okay, <laughs> so that's that's your crusher. We'll we'll run the wiring to that after we do the next part, which is um, we're gonna put a sticky piston right there because they uh, one way to get around the mob stacking is that spiders will climb and when they're climbed up I don't think the mob stacking works as much right so that's always good and then I believe if we just put a lever hmm so open if we just put a lever it would work but that's okay we'll have to run a signal which we can do where's the piston at piston is right here so we'll just run it over to here and then you know we're gonna polish this up too so don't don't worry about the looks right now I'm gonna I'm gonna make that look a lot better here now here in a little bit and basically we'll just have a lever hooked up to this and that'll push them down and then they're ready to be crushed and the last redstone component that I'm going to add for now before I show you all the other more complicated parts is going to require another sticky piston. So let's just craft one of those real quick. We need a regular piston, switch that around. And wood on top, okay. 
And this is going to just cut off the flow as you would do with any typical mob farm before crushing them. And I guess we can just, hmm, that's going to be more difficult to do, isn't it? We're going to have to run a signal all the way around here, which is, it's fine. It's fine, I guess. <laughs> Let's put that back, put that there. And we'll just run it all the way around. Oh, that could have been lava. <laughs> Watch your step. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll just run it all the way around here. Okay, so you get the general idea, right? Let me review it one more time, just in case you haven't caught on. So the process of which you'll do this is you will first activate this piston here to shut it off. This will have a lever. Okay, you'll shut off the flow of them. This would actually be up. All right, one more time. Let me just back up here. Okay, so you've got enough cave spiders here. You're ready to harvest them, right? You would first hit this lever to cut off the flow of the cave spiders to your little um, kill chamber here. Next, you would push them all down a block because there are, they're going to be all you know up here climbing up. So you'll push them down into the crushing area. And when you're ready to crush them, you'll activate the crusher. Wait for it to crush. <laughs> that might be way too long. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. And then once they've done that, you can slice them off. You'll deactivate that. And then let the flow continue. And that's the general idea of the crusher. Yeah, we're going to have to... Oh moves on that I'll get the timing worked out later on but that's for now I think you all get the idea so I'm gonna polish this up a little bit and hook up the redstone to a little <laughs> little circuit here and then uh, I'll show you all if it works so I hooked up all the redstone and uh, I think I'm ready to just try this thing out I'm I didn't do any of those fancy altercations I said on the inside here to make it run better but I just kind of want to see how it runs right now without any of those. We're out. I think I think that's good. Oh, get that out of here. Okay. Um, let's see. A spider spawn, and he has already climbed up the wall. <laughs> you can hear him up there. See, that's the issues you got to work around. Yep. It's the tracking that's the issue there. Hmm. We might have to scratch this design if they're going to do that. But you'll see he climbs up. Okay, here's more. I never actually checked. I guess with, we're within the spawning range, right? I would assume so. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to let this run for a couple minutes. As you can see, it is somewhat working, so let it run for a couple minutes, and then I'll harvest it and see what kind of rates we get here. Actually, I'll let it go for exactly 4 minutes and 30 seconds, so it'll roughly be 5 minutes. Actually, you know what? Hold on. <laughs> no, okay, 5 minutes. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Be right back. Okay, so it's been roughly 4 minutes here. A little over four minutes, and I've noticed the spawn rates have kind of slowed down, but they are still spawning in, and you'll see them come down here in a minute. Um, we'll probably close this off, and we'll see how many have gotten stuck. Yeah, you can see here comes three of them down here. Oh, is he going to make it? Is he going to make it? He might have to have a buddy pushing, but... Oh, no, he climbed. <laughs> he climbed. So we'll close that off to make sure that... Ow, yeah, they, they've got quite the hit range on them there. We'll close it off so that none of them go back. And let's just take a peek in here. And as you can see, actually not that many got stuck. So I think we'll probably just stick with this design and not do any changes. As long as you give them a definitive path find, you know, don't give them a reason to go into the corners. It works out quite well. If we do an entity check, it's hard to tell exactly, but... So there I'm seeing 36, 36, you know, 30 something, and I look this way, I'm seeing two. So there's, there's probably like 30, 40, 35 something in there. 
It's not bad at all. Let's go ahead and crush them. Oh, uh, I guess there's no way of knowing if our timing is right here. They, they might just die. Yeah, they did. Oh, we're actually really close, though, on the timing. Let's see. Let's just take one out. Maybe two. Okay. And then we'll just... We won't do... <coughs> we won't let them build up much at all here. We'll just... Well, there's quite a few, though, isn't there? Come on now. Slide down here. You know you want to. Yeah, see, the issue is they'll, uh, they'll climb on the block that was pushed. And they'll stay there for a while. Which, you know, I can always shoot them if it becomes necessary. But that's all right. Okay, that should be enough. Let's grind them. I don't know why he died. Uh, I guess I should have checked if they were one hit instead of using my sword there, but that's all right. We well, you know what we can do. We can we can always just add a block and see if they die this time. <laughs> Get a couple in there. All right. And are they gonna live? Yes, they did. Okay, so. The magic number in the fifth in the hopper clock is 15, so put 15 blocks in there, and that will be enough for for a nice little uh, one-hit spider grinder here. Um, like I said, there are some adjustments to the design that we can do if need be. But like I said, there hasn't really been too many get stuck. So you get a couple right there. There's probably what two in that corner. One is it just one guy up there right now? Oh, yeah. So we got one got stuck, you know, and that one came out because he saw me. So they will occasionally get stuck, and if you use this for hours on end, you might have to go and clean it out occasionally. Oh, I should not have done that. But yeah, that's that's pretty much this uh, this design right here. Um, we might. I'm gonna check and see how long we are into this episode. And we might do some more cleaning up and make this place look a little better. But, uh, yeah, I'll just check that and let you know. We do have a little time. So one thing I think I want to try and do here is link up a nether portal. Um, I tried to do this already once. And it just, you know, I thought I would just be able to place it and it spawned me a new portal. But instead it took me to the portal back at the base, which just does not work. So... I we kind of need to get a feel for what we want to do with this room here. We've got our circuitry right here, right? Um, we can make this go underneath, which won't be a problem. So we just do like that. Actually, it's going to have to go down one more, which is kind of unfortunate, but that's okay. And then that's not going to work. It's going to need a repeater. But you get the idea. So basically, right here would need to be a wall still. But from this point, no, not even this point. <laughs> um, yeah, you can't really go behind that wall. You can go this way and you can go this way. So I'm wanting an enchanting table, a chest room, and a nether portal. I kind of want the nether portal a little far away from the portal probably the furthest thing away because you now the portals are loud and annoying <laughs> obviously um hmm i don't know this is a tough design these mob rooms always are as you can see the one at our base isn't isn't the most ideal mob room so let's just dig this out here and we can always change it up a little bit in the future but this will probably be our go-to design. So what if we just, you know, we'll probably expand the room back a little bit. Yeah, we'll just stick another portal. Uh, right in here should work, I guess. Yep, I don't see any problem with that. Then we'll have to write down the coordinates, and we'll build a new one in the nether that would hopefully take us back here. And we're going to harvest those little guys <laughs> before we go to, don't worry. Okay, my flint and steel is in the chest. I don't know why I blocked that off. I'm 
gone back to this thing like 10 times now. <laughs> okay. Oh man, look at the uh, string and spider eyes we've already gotten. We'll have an insane amount of string. We won't we won't need a sheep farm or anything. That's one reason I built this too, is I feel like string and spider eyes are more useful useful than zombie flesh is. So and we can trade zombie flesh and spider uh and string, so that's both good. What was that double block placement game? Okay, so coordinates. Negative three thirty eight twenty two 229. Actually, I guess we should do it right on the portal here. So it's going to be negative 342, 22, 225. That's going to be our coordinates there. And we'll harvest these guys and then we'll go on in. <coughs> I'm interested to see how many levels we get here. Hmm. A couple did die there, but that's all right. On sweeping edge, I can really just knock these guys out in one hit. As you can see, it's a pretty good source of XP. Um, it's it's definitely better than the zombie farm, I would say. Okay, yeah. So this is gonna take us to this portal right here, and we do have this old portal that got destroyed by the ghast. We'll uh we'll break this down for the obsidian. Because we, we might have to move our base portal to that one right there to my left. Because it's obviously not going to work. Oh, dropped obsidian. <laughs> so we'll, we'll go to the exact location for for the spider farm one. And then we'll go to the exact location for the base one if if they aren't linked up properly, which I don't think they will be, so that's uh that's always a good thing for us to do. We'll just leave that obsidian there. Okay. So our cords are negative three forty two. We're just gonna divide the left numbers and the right numbers by eight. Negative three forty two divided by eight is gonna be negative forty three base oh, that's not negative forty three. And then 225 divided by 8 is going to be about 28. So we're going to go to negative 43 and 28. Um, I guess it would be this way, right? <laughs> yep, and we're basically on the 28, aren't we? Yes, we are. Okay, so we're not going to have to go very far at all, and I didn't think we would. Oh, hello, Lava Pocket. Oh, <laughs> there's going to be quite a few of those here. Okay, we've almost got it. Okay, now we got it. And we'll keep on digging here. Like I said, just negative 48. It's going to be about... Alright, was it 43 or 48? It's 43, right? Yeah, 43 is going to be right here. So we'll just make this little portal area here. Make it not so claustrophobic in here. Gotta just click the blocks as <laughs> it just slices straight through. Okay. Right here. That's where our portal's gonna go. Alright. We'll just cut corners on this one. Nobody has to know. like that and this will hopefully take us to the spider farm <laughs> hopefully and we are at the spider farm okay let's dump some of these extra blocks off again like that so we have a little bit of room okay now this will hopefully take us back to that portal <laughs> It did. Okay, that's good. That's good. And I guess we'll link up this last portal here too, just just for good measure. It's good practice. Um, we'll see what our what our cords are here. One ninety two, one eighty two. 
That's going to be about zero, zero, isn't it? 192 divided by 8 is going to be 24. 182 divided by 8 is going to be 22. 24, 22, and those are both positive. Okay, let's just go into the nether here. And, yeah, this is, this is essentially right. Okay, that's good. So, we'll just put down some torches marking this, and this long walk just got <laughs> cut and just got made an eighth of what it was, and that that's great because this this really was a pretty painful walk. I'm not gonna lie, that makes this so much easier. And I might build another hub. I don't know. I haven't decided. One factor that makes me want to not do that is the 1.16 update is gonna be the Nether update, which I'm really excited about. It looks amazing. I'm looking forward to that. The Mojang's been doing an excellent job, I will say. But I think that's going to do it for this episode. Look at all the string we've already got. That's that's incredible. Next episode, we'll polish this up and then work on that pumpkin farm I've been talking about. I'm, I'm actually struggling to come up with a design for it, so <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll keep working on that. But until then, I'll probably do some XP grinding, get an anvil down here. Um, this helmet just needs protection three, which we have right here. Um, and then everything else is already done except for the boots. I gotta find a way to get Feather Falling 4 and Unbreaking 3 and then we are golden. <laughs> That's gonna do it. Hope you all enjoyed. If you have any questions about the farm or any confusions, I'll be sure to answer them. I might do some design, mess with the design off camera too, and I'll show you if I make any changes. One change I forgot to mention is I hooked up uh, the shut off and the push down to the same lever which makes sense I guess so don't have to have three buttons you just have two now but like I said that's gonna do it hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one bye